Welcome back to the Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. Now, check this out. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty bad, right? You might be wondering, how did it get that way? Well, I did this one on purpose using a tool in my wife's scrapbook room. Well, don't worry. A good record was not harmed in the making of this video. It was full of scratches and skips. It was given to me by someone getting rid of a few records, so it was the perfect candidate to use as a prop. But still, things like this do happen to records. But how? And how can you prevent it in the future? Well, that's what we're going to check out today. If I ever write a fictional book about a society that fears vinyl records, I'm going to call it Fahrenheit 212. Actually, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Ray Bradbury did okay with his book about a book-burning world. His was titled Fahrenheit 451. And the reason for that was simple. 451 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature at which books will catch fire and burn. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the amount of heat it takes to melt a record. I know, I shudder at the thought too. Imagine a world where music and records were feared and attacked. Oh wait, you know, that actually happened. Many times. I'm not even thinking about the PMRC, which stood for the Parents Music Resource Center, and their attack on music in the 1980s, specifically rock. Before that, there was the disco demolition night at Comiskey Park in Chicago. On that night, July 12, 1979, some fans were there to witness a crate of disco records being blown up. Well, the night ended in a riot with bonfires fueled by disco records. The field was in such terrible shape, the White Sox actually had to forfeit the game. And that was the fourth time in history up to that point, and there's only been one more since then. Poor disco, right? Anyway, back to the topic of the day, heat and records. Two things that should be kept as far away from one another as possible. They don't get along at all. Case in point, my original copy of ZZ Top's Eliminator. It was somehow exposed to heat since the day I bought it in 1983. Don't ask me how. All I can think of is that I must have stored the box near a radiator and being Z in the alphabet, the record was at the side of the box closest to the vent. Now flash forward a few decades and I wanted to hear how it sounded on the new turntable I'd bought. Well, imagine my dismay when I discovered it had warped. A slight warp can be playable. This was not a slight warp. It was horrifying. I thought about trying to save it using an old trick I'd learned when I was young, and that involved placing a record between two panes of glass and leaving it out in the sun to flatten out. I wasn't hopeful, nor did I want to listen to the result, so I immediately went to my local record store and bought another copy. I'm lucky I have them nearby. So how hot did it have to get for my ZZ Top record to warp? Well, pretty hot, actually. Once a vinyl record is exposed to a temperature above 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it's in danger of warping. Or is it warpage? Anyway, that's why when I buy a record in the summer, I make sure it's not exposed to direct sunlight. If I have to make a stop between the record store and home, I'll slip it beneath the seat where it's cooler. A trunk would be better, but I drive a pickup. It's not like it gets to be 140 degrees in New England anyway. But if the temperature outside reaches 97, the temperature in a car can climb as high as 43 degrees in an hour if left in the sun. And 97 plus 43 is 140. So if I do make a stop, I'd better be quick. It also doesn't help that most records are black, and as we all know, black absorbs heat. So are you enjoying your lesson in thermochemistry? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so, if you must leave your records in a vehicle, try to park where it's shaded and crack a window if you can. Now, if you have a trunk, that's the best solution, but keep your visit to less than an hour to be safe. Now, here are some additional numbers to be aware of. 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or zero Celsius. Records exposed to below freezing temperatures are in peril of becoming brittle and breaking. We already know about the temps they'll warp and melt at, so what's the ideal temperature to store your records at? Now, a good rule of thumb is if you're comfortable, then your records are comfortable. If you can't trust your comfort level because your internal body temp is all over the place, well, then a temperature between 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit is optimal. Now, I'll leave you with this. If you shop online, it may be a good idea to keep track of the weather when you buy a record. If the areas between the seller and your home are in the midst of a heat wave, 
it might be a good idea to wait until the, the, you know, the temperatures drop a bit. You wouldn't want that $89 copy of Sam Cooke's Live at the Harlem Square Club to show up warped. It can get sweltering in the back of a transport vehicle, and you can't control the weather, but you can control when you click buy now. In the end, try not to worry too much about it. Awareness is everything. And speaking of awareness, are you aware that you can subscribe to this channel right now? And if you want to know when new episodes are released, click the little bell icon down below. And until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.